Well, let me start out before we get to to that, today's lesson, do a little background. You remember we are studying about John the Baptist, the birth of John the Baptist. And uh, he is the forerunner to Jesus Christ. And uh, his parents, Zachariah and Elizabeth, had prayed for a child for a long time. Uh, and probably had even forgot about the prayer, thinking it was probably impossible because they are older in age. They're up in age past what would normally be the childbearing age. So uh, <laughs> she said way past. Uh, so Zachariah is a priest and he's attending to his duties in the sanctuary and this is a very important in the temple this is a very important duty you probably would only get to do it maybe once in a lifetime because there were so many priests it was divided uh into groups and they were chosen by lot so uh Zachariah was a a godly man and Elizabeth was a godly woman so Zachariah is in the was in the temple carrying out his duties when the angel Gabriel appeared to him and also told him that he would have a child. Well, Zachariah, like us, thinking <laughs> this must be a joke, okay? Think about if you are over 75 or whatever and you don't have any children, your wife is old, uh, and someone coming to you, you're going to have a child. You and your wife gonna have a child, gonna give birth to a child. And you know, we as humans, we say we trust in God and we have faith, but a lot of times we kind of put him in a box. We limit what he can do, although we say all things are possible through Christ, but we kind of put a limit on it. And so while we go through this lesson today, let's kind of think about our faith and the limitations that we put on our faith, or even a miracle happening, we explain it away some kind of way. Maybe it was just luck, but we try to put the human spin on it. But remember, we say, uh, through God, all things are possible. So Gabriel wants a sign. He gets it. He will not be able to speak the whole time that his wife is with child. So he can't celebrate. He can't run and tell me. He can't say anything. I think last week the challenge was, well, how long can you go without speaking? So anyway, the time when we come up to the lesson today, um, well, let's back up and say Elizabeth was with child but for five months she hid herself no one saw her and then during a three-month period her cousin Mary came to visit her who was with child also which was uh caring Jesus our savior and so now today's lesson uh comes at the time that uh Elizabeth will give birth and, you know, our lesson saying uh, the title Zachariah is redeemed. So we'll see that part today, too. But we'll pick up today's lesson uh, where Elizabeth has given birth to the child. Uh, any questions, comments before we get into the lesson scripture? Okay. Uh, Where's my mic person? Will someone read? Let's do it in sections. Verse 57 through 60. Bring the gift is the tithe loan. When it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy, and they shared her joy. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child. They were going to name him after his father, Zechariah. 
But his mother spoke up and said, no, he shall be called John. Okay, so we see at, at this point, uh, people know that Elizabeth has given birth, but you remember no one saw her for a long time. Well, they, for the first five months, and then it, in the case, kind of like the last three months, she and Mary were together, and then it came time for her to give birth. But somehow, you, you know how news travels, so the people are aware that she's given birth. And it was a custom during that time to circumcise the child, a male child, on the eighth day. And uh, this is, was a way of dedicating the child back to the Lord's servant. Uh, so it was also customary to name the child after the father. So the community was ready to, now they are celebrating, they are happy. They want to name the child after the right. Elizabeth speaks up and said, no, the child would be called John. She had already been told that this child would be named John. Now notice how everybody was celebrating with her and we should celebrate good news. Uh, but then the custom of naming the child after the father became an issue because they were used to the custom of naming after the father. A male child was expected during that time, we didn't have social security and all these different organizations and 401ks and all this different stuff. So they depended on a male child, not only to carry the name on, but to take care of the parents and make decisions for the family. So this was very important. Now, the community kind of went against Elizabeth when she said, John, he would be called John. Um, and during that time, women didn't have a, a lot of say so anyway. But before I get into that, let's read the second outline, which is um, bring the praise. You get the next one, Eatman got this. Okay. They said to her, There is no one among your relatives who has that name. Then they made signs to his father to find out what he would like to name the child. He asked for a writing pen. And to everyone's astonishment, he wrote, His name is John. Immediately, his mouth was open and his tongue set free. And he began to speak praising God. All the neighbors were filled with awe. And throughout the hill country of Judea, people were talking about all these things. <laughs> so as you can see, Elizabeth has given birth. They're rejoicing with her. Now there's a family feud going on, isn't it? This child, lady, woman, you don't know what you're doing. This child is supposed to be named after your husband. This is tradition. And you're trying to change it. There's nobody in your family called John. You have lost your mind. Elizabeth insists. She knows she's right. And that's what we have to do. When we know we are doing what God says do, we have to stand alone sometime. And I know we tell our children, you do right. If Johnny go jump off a cliff, you going to jump off too. But we want to be accepted. And standing alone is hard. So we as adults have to remember that too. If it's the right thing, then stand by. We have to set the example. So she, she stood on, it's gonna, his name is going to be John. 
well, the community, the family and stuff said, no, nah, no, nah, uh-uh, you don't have the authority to do this. So then they go to the husband. He writes down, and remember, he can't speak. He hadn't been able to speak all this time. He writes down his name is John. So what did they do? They, they accepted it. They immediately accepted it. Okay, but that was a custom during that time. Uh, and so what we can get out of that, then men, if you're going to be the leaders, we don't have one and two in here now, but if you're going to be leaders and you know people are following you, be a godly leader. Do the right thing. Lead us in the right direction. We'll follow. But you have to think about what you're doing and the effect it has on others. So he said his name will be John. And what happened? Immediately he was redeemed. Once he started trusting, uh, showing that he trusted in God, he was not doubting him, he's going to do what thus said the Lord, he immediately was able to speak. So everybody knows about this because they know for some reason or another he hadn't been able to speak. But now he's speaking from me. So that, that, that's, think about that. Lord has told you he's going to bless you. The baby is born and you're still not blessed. And, and you, you get into that eight day point and, and everybody celebrating and you're still waiting. Lord, you, when are you going to bless me? And then the opportunity comes for you to show how, how much you trust in me. And once you do that, he's like, okay, now you're ready to receive back what, what I had to take from you to get your attention. So, and on the naming part, uh, with the Noah having his name, initially, we, I thought he was going to be James. And to me, <laughs> <laughs> to me, it was like, no, nah, we ain't going to do that. We got too many James in this family. <laughs> We're going to do something different. And now that I look at him, Noah fits in perfect. Okay. I couldn't see him in anything else. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Wait a minute. It's amazing that Elizabeth was old but yet she didn't know the quote unquote rules or the regulations of what to name the child. It's not like she was just a young person. She had already known what the son would have typically would have been named throughout the whole life because she's been through it. So for her to say that his name is going to be John, there had to have been a reason for that person's name to be John. Yeah, and, and in reading the lesson, uh, I didn't see anywhere where they said that she was told the child would be named John. So it could have been that uh, through some means that her husband told her that the angel had told him his name would be John. And she was trusting, wasn't it? I mean, she from from the very beginning, she was she was very trusting in what was going on. Uh, and God gives us a special person too. Let's back up to Mary went to visit her. And Mary had unusual circumstances uh for her pregnancy also, but they'll let you know God uses whom he wants to, however he wants to. And I guess I can add that in there ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs> so, uh, and we might try to say God won't use this person or we write this person off or whatever, but God does not write you off. And even though uh, Zachariah stumbled, he still blessed him. All he wanted him to do is come back and show to where and do the things that he wanted him to do. And he carried out his priestly uh, task that he had to do. And 
And he thought that was a great honor. And it was to be able to go in and burn the incense in the temple. You only got to do it. But that's not, that's not the only plan. That's not the great thing that he had for him. So uh, a lot of times we are doing things, but God does not look at greatness the same way we look at greatness. And he wants us to be uh, his disciples. He wants to use us. And sometimes he has to prepare us. Sometimes we're not quite ready for it, uh, but he will prepare us and he's not going to leave us alone in preparing us. Now, let's look at the next outline and see what he had to say. You hadn't been able to speak for these nine months. You hadn't been able to rejoice. You've been scribbling stuff down or some other way, but you didn't have a voice. Now you have a voice. And the thing is, it said immediately when he did what God had told him to do, that angel had told him to do. And let's back up and say, why did he question? Because he, Gabriel was the one that uh, revealed this to him. And he should have, when he said, I am the angel Gabriel, that he should have been familiar with, okay, he sent from God. But and he didn't question that he was sent from God. He just questioned the ability, the time to have, but that's what we call miracles, right? Things out of the ordinary. Okay, let's uh, go into the, the last outline and see what uh, he had to say. Last outline. Just bring the light. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven, to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. Okay, so we see now Zachariah, he can speak and he is happy and he is praising the Lord and he's letting everybody know that this child is the forerunner of Jesus Christ. That he's going to tell everybody, prepare you for salvation, prepare you for Jesus Christ. And, let, and he was letting them know this is the way to salvation. This is what God is going to do because Jesus has not been born yet, but this is what God is going to do. And this is not your savior here because everybody want to know, hey, what's going on with this child? This child got to be greatness. Everything about this child has been not the ordinary. So this child, some of them were saying, well, he's going to be a prophet. Or he's the Messiah and whatever. And he said, no, he's the forerunner he's gonna let everybody know who's coming so he never said so Zachariah was preparing the one and preparing us for what was gonna be done for us because we looking forward to the second coming of Christ huh? so that was uh, a great blessing to the whole community to those that were listening notice how God got everybody's attention I mean, that was the talk of the town. It was going far and near. Everyone was, was learning about this child, John the Baptist. Uh, any, other, any comments, observation on that? One thing that's uh, not in, I think, verse uh, 80, which is not part of our lesson, but that part is going to tell us how... Uh, John is different growing up. He dressed different. And we know he's a Nazarite, that he wasn't gonna, he, he wasn't gonna cut his hair. He didn't drink any uh, intoxicating beverages. And he basically lived alone. Uh, so this was preparation. He didn't just all of a sudden jump into it. God prepares us for what he wants us to do. He doesn't leave us out there wondering what the next step is. Uh, figure it out for yourself. So it was a while. They say he he grew up. 
But when the time came, then he started delivering the message and people were coming to see him. So I thought uh, that was an interesting part to, to put in there that he grew. He was born, we don't hear a whole lot about his, up, his upbringing after the, the time of the circumcision, but God was preparing him for that work and God prepares us. And sometimes we're being prepared from the very beginning, I look at my children and what they are doing now and go back to what they were interested in when they were toddlers. And now I can look back and say, oh, well, he's always been interested in that. He's always, so all the formative years, you're being prepared. And don't think we are too old at this point to be being prepared for something. Our work here is not done until the last breath is drawn. And even at that, I think we leave something. We leave a legacy of, we leave. Sometimes I hear my children say things and I'm like, I remember telling them that. But they probably don't know where they got it from. They just know this sounds good or yeah, this makes sense. So every step we do, we say, do, we've heard the saying, do as I do, not as I say. Let's live where they can do what we say and what we do. They should match up every day of the week. Yes, sir. So it's kind of to piggyback on the lesson. Uh, in order to hear from the Lord, you have to be quiet, but you have to be willing to receive. And so it's, it's, it's a portion there. And a lot of times we're like, I'm, I'm quiet, I'm listening, and the Lord gives us something, but we're not ready. We, we don't want to receive it. And it's like, Lord, you never talked to me. It's like, no, I gave you specific instructions. You just didn't want to do it. And so, uh, but then when we actually listen and receive it, we'll find ourselves in, in situations that are more rewarding than we realize they would be. Anyone else? Yeah, yeah. We know that Zachariah did what God said to do. Um, at, at, even when he closed his mouth and for the months that Elizabeth was pregnant. But what, what would have happened if when they gave him that tablet and said, are we naming this baby after you? And he said, yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> He'd never be able to talk again. You know, yeah. the, it, so, and so I and it and it talks about our obedience to God. What would be the uh, situations have circumstances or consequences? And so, had he not done what God told him to do, where would we be? <laughs> now that, that's something to think about: the consequences of not doing what God tells you to do, and the effect it has on. Uh, other people. Uh, sometimes you hear people say, well, whatever I did, it just hurt me. I didn't hurt nobody else. But your actions have consequences on other people also. And we need to be aware of that. And uh, I don't think it was so much that he questioned God because we can ask God questions, but he laughed as if <laughs> this is not possible. And it was possible. I think that's the problem. We need to realize that even though we have faith, how far does our faith extend? Sometimes we put God in a box. Sometimes we say, well, I can't do this on my own. You sure can't. But you don't lean on your own understanding or your abilities and how you lean on God and we say all things are possible and we know a miracles happening all the time if you go back over your life there's some things you came out of 
where I came out of. I said, look back over my life. There's some things I come, I came out of. It was nothing but the grace of God. And, and sometimes we look so hard for something a certain way that we overlook it when we get it because we've already decided how it was going to be. I used to tell my kids, I'm like, when you come running to me to tell something, you need to ask yourself three questions before you tell me. Why? Is this going to help this person? Is this to get the person in trouble? Is this going to make it better for them in the future? And I had one, I won't say which one, I always come and tell something, say, you need to whoop them. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't, <laughs> we are good parents. God is a better parent than we could ever be. And think about if he chastised us for everything that we didn't do right. Uh, when we broke the rule, but now he's patient with us and he has a way of showing us the way that he would have us to go, what he wants us to do. And he can use anybody. But even on those things we talk about, we should not have done that we did. Do. That's what this lesson is about. It's being redeemed. Once you're redeemed, all that's erased. God doesn't bring that up anymore. It's time to move forward and let him use you. And there's nothing that you've done that's so bad that you can't come back to the heavenly Father. that you can't come back. And that's a testimony in itself. We come back, we can show others. He will accept you also. Any other comments, observations, closing? Sister, uh, <laughs> so it's the house <laughs> do you have a closing you usually have some okay <laughs> so in the commentary in your life it says god has a purpose and plan for your life because zechariah initially doubted the promise of god the lord chastised zechariah we just talked about chastising. later god redeemed zechariah have you stumbled in your spiritual life because of unbelief? If so, ask God to forgive and restore you. He has not withdrawn his plan for your life. God specializes in redeeming his children from their failures to fulfill his plan. Again, it is all about, you know, God's plan. And sometimes we will have to take some detours or have some, some, some bumps in the road. And we may have to be stalled for a moment. And most of the time it's because of us, <laughs> because we do it to ourselves. But um, we're reassured to know that as long as we belong to the Lord, his plan is going to be fulfilled. And, um, you know, it's up to us to be willing to allow him to use us to fulfill that portion of his plan. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this lesson this morning. We thank you for our blessings yet to receive. And as we go throughout, I go into the next phase of our service, Father. We pray for your grace and mercy and understanding. And Father, with the knowledge that we receive, please give us the wisdom to do what you would have us to do with it, to be a light in a dying world. In your son Jesus' name, amen. Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John, of, G, of John and Jordan. And straightway, coming up out of the, the waters, he saw the heavens open and the spirit like a dove descended upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Behold, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. May the Lord bless the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his holy and righteous word.
this morning for this, the baptism services for Kingston, uh, Bill Flower, and also for Glenn III, and his father is in the baptism pool with me, Glenn Jr., and his grandfather is standing over him, yes. Yes. And Glenn yes. Sr. Yes. Brother Glenn Sr., you get to do like my dad said, you the originator. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Take all the credit for it. Um, I'm saying what I need to say before he comes in his water. It's a little chilly. Uh, and so uh, I want to say what I need to say before I bring him Amen. into the water. It's been several years since we've baptized um, and had our youth here in the church and church family with COVID and all of the other things that have gone on. Uh, but it is refreshing to know that God's still in the saving business. Amen. Glenn um, uh, came forward last week on his own accord. I think surprised dad. I don't know if he surprised mom or not, but he surprised <laughs> everybody in coming forward wanting to be baptized. Amen. And we rejoice in receiving him. Kingston has also dedicated and given his life uh, at uh, Mount Helm. And he is going to be baptized here today as well. And we receive him. And so we're going to now proceed with our baptism services. According to the scripture, we're reminded of God's word, and that is repent of your sins and be baptized. That's it. That's it. Glenn, we ask of you now, do you love the Lord? Are you willing to be baptized? Show forth as a sign your love for the Lord and willingness to obey his rules and commandments. We do. In obedience to the great head of the church, I do baptize you now, my brother. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost.
some time with Kingston last night and very versed in the word of the Lord, very versed in his knowledge of God's saving grace. Kingston indicated to me that he loved the Lord, and he loves his family, and he wanted to be baptized. Amen. Is that still your confession, Kingston? Do you love the Lord? Yes, sir. Are you willing to be baptized? Show forth that you're part of God's team. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. God for this opportunity. We want to also thank the rest of the family members who have gathered here, who have come to be a part of it, sister. Yes, and Wilkinson, we're most definitely honored and glad to see you, Amen. your brother here, uh, Minister Moore, as well, as well as, as ah, little Glenn's mother and his sister was up here as well. Henry, Lemmy, and the rest of the family that have come to show their support here this day. We're thankful to you. Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for all that you have done. We thank you for all that you're doing. We thank you for this blessed day. We thank you for this blessed hour that we were able to take two young people who have dedicated their lives to your service in obedience to what you have called them to do. The Bible says, suffered unto me that all of us should be as those two young children who are innocent. And Lord, they uh, come humbly in the only way that they know how. And that's trusting in the people around them to provide and to take care of them. They trust now in the Lord to watch over all their needs. We thank you. We praise you. We magnify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As they're finishing putting the pool thing back together, we'll go ahead and get started with the beginning of our service with a congregation of him. O come all ye faithful. And that'll be page 93 in your hymnal. That's on. Above. Oh, I'm sorry, glory, glory, glory given. 
Word of the Father. Word of the Father. Now in flesh appearing. Now in flesh appearing. Oh, come. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ. We're going to keep it going. If you all say, we give him all the glory. We we give him all the glory. 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 Forever. We praise his name forever. We praise his name forever. We praise his name. We praise his name forever. We praise his name forever. standing for the devotion, please. I'm reading from the New Living Translation, Romans 10, starting at verse 9. For if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by the believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it is by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. As the scripture tells us, anyone who believes in him will not be disappointed. Bless the reading and the hearing of his word. Amen. Good morning. See another day's journey. I'm glad about it. You know, it might be a little rain outside, but we know he knows what's best for us. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, we are in heaven. Hallowed would be thy name, thy kingdom come, and will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, right now, we just like to take a portion of our time just to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for watching over us last night, Heavenly Father, as we rest, slept and slumbered. Watching over us, Heavenly Father, dispatching your angels to make sure everything was all right. Heavenly Father, waking us up to embark on a new day new week, Heavenly Father. And Heavenly Father, we'd like to just thank you. Lord, as we stand here and petition, we'd like to first off and say just be with us, Heavenly Father, and protect us at all times. Lord, we're praying for our sick and our shut-in. Heavenly Father, those who are in the hospitals, Heavenly Father, be that doctor that they need. Heavenly Father, those who are in trouble right now, Heavenly Father, and they need you to be a lawyer, Lord Jesus, and we ask that you to intervene, to step in, Heavenly Father. Lord, there's a wayward child, a wayward boy, a wayward girl that's out there, Heavenly Father, in the world, dear Lord, and we ask that you protect them and guide them, dear Lord, and with the words that we learn, Heavenly Father, let us meditate unto them, dear Lord, that if we just look to the hills and put our trust and our faith in you, dear Lord, we know everything's going to be all right because we know from the hill comes our help, which is you, dear Lord. Heavenly Father, not only our sick and shut in, Heavenly Father, but we're praying for the bereaved. We're praying for our pastor of this church, dear Lord, and his family. Yes, Father. Each minister that is on the roster, dear Lord, the deacon board, the mother board, the usher board, every member, Heavenly Father, in every church that is open in your name. Because, dear Lord, you did say that in the in that coming hour, and in that coming time, that every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess yes. that you are King of Kings. Lord. Yes, you are. And we thank you. Heavenly Father, as I bring this prayer to a close, dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we'd like to ask 
that you put a special protection of hedge around our youth, dear Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, the Kingston and G3, dear Lord, they gave their life to you today, dear Lord, and we pray that you continue to be with them, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, strengthen them in their daily walk. Heavenly Father, guide them, dear Lord. Keep them out of harm. Heavenly Father, order our steps, order our hearts, and order our minds. These things, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
God bless you to each and every one of you that have joined in with us this day. We are blessed to be here on what we call another day's journey. The songwriter says, and I am glad, I am glad about it. Um, we want to take a moment, first of all, just to lift up in prayer, Sister Turner's grandsons has just been rushed to the hospital and as with any parent or grandparent, you don't know, it causes room for concern. We can trust and know that God uh, is still in the blessing business and God has everything under his control. So our prayers and our hearts go out to you and your daughter and the rest of your family um, and we're going to speak in a word of prayer. Amen. That the spirit go before them. Amen. And make preparations to handle all things in the name of Jesus. In a word of prayer, Father God in heaven, we're praying for them right now. We lift up uh, Sister Turner and Sharon and Andre and Perry Jr. Uh, as they're praying for their nephew, their grandson, and their son right now. And Lord, I don't know the details. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what happened, but you know all things and we trust you in all things. Even when we can't, don't understand them, even when we can't figure them out, we know that you're still working them out. So in the name of Jesus, I pray peace in their spirit right now. And I pray healing in his body right now. I pray healing in whatever doctor, whatever nurse, whatever paramagra, whoever it may be that touches him in the name of Jesus, uh, that your power travel through them. And Lord, when it's all said and done, we pray that you're able to lift up a man and give him the power and the abilities to give you the praise in front of all of them. And just to be able to say, my God is able to all, do all things. So we trust you. We're praying for him and we lift him up right now in the name of Jesus. All in agreement, say amen. Amen. And amen again. Thank you. And again, our prayers go out with you for you. Still praying for the Wiggins family uh, and their daughter, Lashia Few, uh, and her uh, treatments. Praying for Sister Laquita Price Thomas. Amen. And her uh, uh, treatments as well. Sister Wilkerson, you are here, but we're still praying, lifting you up and praying for you each and every Sunday. And I'm glad you were able to drag that old man out the house today and get him up there. Hey, Amen. He looked good up here. And we're honored and proud of you and your family. Brother Wilkins, do you mind? You want to introduce some of your family members back there? It looks like it's a whole section, so I ain't going to pick on you too much today. I can't handle all of them today. Hey, Amen. <laughs> If you claim Glenn Wilkerson, there you go, boy. I was surprised. Some of them, some of them hesitated at first, bro. Wilkerson. <laughs> God bless you. We're glad to have you here again. They're here for a double service uh, this morning for a baptism and a dedication service. Amen. With us this morning. Amen. Uh, Kingston, how are you doing this morning? Hey, man, you have any friends and relatives here with you this morning? Wait, 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 wait. You got to stand up so they can hear you. Tell him to stand up too, the rest of them. You got to stand up first. There you go. Hey, Kingston. You, you got... They're at home, but you got some of your teachers back there as well. So we're glad to have all of them here. And we also have some members here uh, from uh, Mount Helm family that are participating with him uh, today. Did he leave anybody out? Let me. 
All right. Mount Helm family, raise your hand, stand, however you want to do it. All right. Go ahead, Kansas. We just got one more. There's two back, three, several of them. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Um, again, we are honored to be able to have the baptism today uh, and baptizing those two uh, young men. That water wasn't too cold, was it, Glenn? Wasn't too cold? Yeah, okay. <laughs> hey. hey, man. We are blessed to have done that act again as well. Um, Trying to make sure I don't leave anything or anybody out. We do have some special birthdays this week. Before I do birthday, are there any acknowledgments that you're aware of? Yeah, I'm not aware of any. Um, we have a birthday today. Uh, where Miss Bradford at? Well, she is somewhere I just spoke to. Her. Amen. Uh, Zuri Davis has a birthday today Zuri. all right her birthday is today y'all let miss miss bradford know that amen so she won't get in trouble with the children mm -hmm. cynthia hammond has a cynthia hammond has a birthday today uh this week we want to acknowledge her brother hammond cynthia hammond has a birthday in one two three in four days all right amen he put Four days. You sit, do it in five days if you want to. You'll be in, back in the church. Amen. In five days. Uh, Christy's birthday is this week. It's 16th. Amen. Christy Flowers has a birthday this coming Friday as well. I have a grandbaby that has a birthday today as well. Happy birthday, Delaney. Amen. God bless you. Um, I think anyone else has a birthday this week. We think we have covered all of them. God bless you. Come now as we continue our worship service, as we give back to God that which already belong unto him, as we surrender unto him his tithes and our offerings come.
You will stand with us. Father God in heaven, we thank you again for this, another day's journey in which you clothe us in our right mind and you started us on this pathway called life on this day that no man or woman has ever seen before. We embark right now, gracious Father, on minutes, hours, and seconds that you have given to no one else, but for some reason, you allowed us to see it, and we are thankful for it. You said in your words that when we pray in our daily prayers, we should ask, give us this day our daily bread, whatever we have in need for, whatever you have in store for us. God, we understand and realize you already know about it and you've already made the provisions for it and we thank you. Sometimes when we do lean to our own understanding, we, a man might try to figure it out or try to work it out and uh, Lord, we fall short, but, but you said it for a reason. Lean not in your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge you and and you will direct our path so lord help us and our disbelief help us in our shortcoming help us when we can't see our way in or out we thank you right now for this opportunity this morning that somebody has come this day searching for an answer somebody has come this day amen trying to deal with a circumstance or situation but lord i pray and trust right now that you can touch their hearts and spirit and give them peace. Lord, they are praying that you might change somebody. They're praying that you might change their circumstances. They're praying that you might change their situation. But in the name of Jesus right now, we are praying that even if you're just trying to change them in their circumstance, change them in their situation, you give them the strength and the abilities to overcome it all. We thank you right now for those that are gathered here this morning for this the dedication service. We praying right now your anointing. We praying your blessings upon. In the name of Jesus, we pray right now that your spirit hovers over and covers all. In the name of Jesus, Satan has no room. Satan takes no place this day. In Jesus' name, now bless this offering. Bless those who have given. Bless those who have come. Bless these candidates in baptism who just baptized. We put it all in your hands. In Jesus' name, we ask. And in Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. You may be seated this morning.
the child. Singing Jesus, Jesus. Yeah, so holy, making mine. New life, new hope to all he brings. Listen to the angels sing. Glory, glory, glory. Father, three wise men travel from afar. They were guided by a shining star to see King Jesus where he lay in a manger filled with hay. Singing Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Whoa, a wonderful child. Singing Jesus, Jesus, yes, so holy, meek and mild, new life and hope to all he brings. Listen to the angels sing, glory, glory, glory to the new born king. He was Herod. Born in a lonely manger, Virgin Mary chosen as his mother, and Joseph as his earthly father. Three wise men travel from afar, they were guided by a shining star to see King Jesus where he lay in a manger filled with hay. Singing Jesus, Jesus, whoa, what a wonderful child. Singing Jesus, Jesus, yes, so holy, big and mild, new life and hope to all. Glory, glory, glory to the newborn King. Amen. God bless you. Come on, stand with us. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see.
many dangers tall and snake. I have already come this grace that brought me safe thus far. been there 10,000 years. Bright shining as the sun. Come on, praise God, praise God, praise God, for he's worthy. For he's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the setting of a saint. You ought to have a reason to praise him. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And his spirit that dwells in and around us. To God be the glory forever and forever and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. God bless you, Sister Mentor. Our prayers are with you. Amen. This morning, I understand. Amen. There's a word that I will ask of you to look at with me this morning that comes from two passages in the Bible. The first word picks up where we left off last week in the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 39. Luke, chapter 1, verse 39. The second passage will come from John chapter 1, verse 29. Luke chapter 1, verse 39. And it reads as follows. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ear, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. Go with me to John chapter 1. John chapter one 
verse number 29. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming to him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. This is he of whom I said, after me cometh a man which is before, before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not. I think I better say that again. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest. Israel, um, I'm sorry, to Israel. Therefore, am I come baptizing with water. And John bare record saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not. I think I better say that again. And I didn't know him. But he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, upon whom thou shalt see the spirit of sin and remain on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And I saw in bare record that this is the Son of God. Amen. God bless you. On last week, we spoke a word from the book of Luke, where the angels had come and spoke to Mary. Gabriel, Angel Gabriel came to Mary and spoke and told her, blessed is she among women and have found favored in the eyesight of the Lord, blessed and highly favored. We talked about on last week, this particular text here picks up at the same point where she finds herself talking with Elizabeth. And Elizabeth said the same thing, that she was blessed um, the Lord. From the book of John, I used to hear the little kids, uh, John the Baptizer. John the Baptist, what a fitting word to possibly share this morning on a day that we have baptized too. Bear with me for just a moment. Amen. We, we won't hold you long. I know my Baptist preachers and all Baptist preachers said it, but this one won't hold you long. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I, I, I'm only going to say I'm going to close one time, Brother David, then I'm going to bring it on in. All right. Um, but I've got to kind of bounce around a little bit. Uh, Jesus said throughout the Bible many things that taken in their own individuality just are statements but when you bring them together it drives home a point while he was walking with his disciples he said something like this except a grain of seed falls to the earth and die it can't come forth Again, hmm. he told him one time, he says, the day is coming when men will give me up and I will leave you. And he says the temple will be destroyed. But in three days, amen, it will rise up. Again, 
He used analogies like that to speak about things that he was going through. He mentioned one by the name of Jonah. And Jonah, Jonah ran from the Lord. And the Bible says that God had given him instructions to do, but he did not want to do them. So the Bible said instead of him going where God wanted him to go, he went down to a city. And he went down and got in a ship and he went down and got in the lower part of the belly of the ship and found themselves in troubled water on the seas like the sailors had never seen before. And he realized and understood that he was the cause of the troubles on the water, troubles in the ship. And then he volunteered and said, just throw me overboard. <laughs> Your troubles will be over. And they put him actually overboard and threw him down in the water. And the Bible says a big fish, a whale came and swallowed him and took him down to the bottom of the sea. But after some three days in the water, he came back up. Individually, all separate points. But for some strange reason, when the children of Israel found themselves captive down in, held as slaves down in the Egypt, comes to take away the sins of the word. I, I got a question. I'm sorry if I'm a little confused. Y'all got a question. Somebody need to help me out because I read a scripture a few minutes ago that says, I don't know. I think I read that scripture twice when they were talking about him. He says, well, I, I don't know what he looks like. I, I, I've never met him. I, I, I've never been around him. And I, I didn't get an email or, or a photo snap or a FaceTime or anything else with him. So I really don't know. But there was no doubt in his conversation when he saw him coming. He says, behold, the Lamb of God. <laughs> That's a testimony in itself. And when he came up to Jesus, Jesus presented who he was and asked of John to baptize him. John says, I'm not worthy to baptize you. Amen. You ought to be baptized in me. Jesus said, forbid it not. You have to do what the scripture says and going forth with the baptism. Amen. And, and I'm, I'm going to get to look for another piece of this just a second. But And so, so John baptizes Jesus. And the only sign that John really knew that it was Jesus that God and the angels gave John was when it happens, you'll see, amen, a dove descending down upon him. Then you will know. John said, I, I don't know. John said, I, I've never seen him. I've never met him before, but, but, but I know he, he's coming. I know he's coming because God has already told. Me. And the confirmation that God gave me is when I see a dove descending down upon him. And so John is now baptizing Jesus. And as he is baptizing Jesus, all of a sudden, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. You got three superstars on the stage at the same time. You, usually you wait until one get through for the other one. You wait until one does his part or the other part, then the other one, sure. But the Bible says, God, when Jesus came up out of the water, the dove descended down upon him, and the heavens opened up, and a voice came out and said, this is my beloved son, and whom I'm well. Father, the son, and the Holy Spirit. All. There at the same, same time. John said, I don't know. Never met him. 
but once they were in the water together, there was no doubt in John's mind who he was. These two young people dedicated their lives and went before the church congregation in the respective places and said that they were saved, accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. Now, I want to make sure you understand it's not a matter of wanting to be saved. Amen. You're either saved or you, you're not. Well, pastor, I'm working on it. Amen. Sister Audrey is in the back. Uh, she's a nurse, medical profession. When a person is pregnant, are they almost pregnant or are they pregnant? Huh? Oh, okay. So you you're not wanting to be pregnant when you're pregnant, right? Okay. You either are or you are not. Amen. You are either saved or you are not. There's not a I want to be. There's not a I'm almost or I'm working on it. Amen. The Bible says if you confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart, Brother Langston read it from the, uh, a different version this morning. He said, you will be, King James said, you shall be saved. It is definite. It's not a matter of you complica uh, contemplating or uh, calculating how it is to be done. It really does not involve you except for the fact that you accept. And some of us feel that we've got to work to be saved. You can't work enough to be saved because the Bible says all of your work is as filthy rags in the eyesight of God. These two young people, amen, came before and expressed their desires, amen, and explained to me and shared with me that they love the Lord and they feel that the Lord loved them and that they are saved. And they want to show an outward sign of something that has already occurred on the inside and that they were willing to be baptized. The best way I could explain it to them is that you got your favorite team and your favorite team wears its favorite colors, amen. God has a team called the Christian Army, and amen. And the way you let people know is that you're willing to come forth and be baptized in public, you whether to regularly commune and show forth that you are saved. It is an external announcement about something that has already occurred internally. John said, I don't know. But yet and still he finds himself in the water with him being baptized. I beg the difference about him knowing. It. For the angel went and talked to Mary and said, behold, amen, you are blessed among women and God has found favor with you. And you shall become pregnant with a child conceived by the Holy Spirit. And this child shall be called Jesus. His name shall be Emmanuel, which means God the Father, God the Son, will be right here with you. And so we preached on that last week. And after the angel finished, Mary kind of kept things to herself and said, I'm just going to wait and see. But if you read the passages before that, the Bible says the angel went and visited Zachariah too. Somebody was talking about that in the Sunday school. Yeah, I don't think I'll be listening to you, but I'm listening. Amen. So be careful what y'all say about the past in Sunday school. Amen. He listening. <laughs> and the Bible says, Zachariah, I know you only have a few more weeks till you retire. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of your life. 
but before you retire, amen, I, I, I need you to get ready to play some football with your little boy in your late stage of life. The Bible says your prayers have been answered. Amen. And if you like me, you just kind of go with the prayers you played in the last week. But the Lord went back some 30, 40, 50 years ago and picked up one of those old prayers that him and his wife might have a child. Busted off that prayer and brought it some 50, 60 years later and said, now it's time for you to have a child. Look out, boy. <laughs> yeah. But God will bring them right on time. And, and, and they talked in the Sunday school lesson about how he didn't believe, he didn't understand, and God silenced him. And soon his wife, Elizabeth, became pregnant. Hmm. In her old age, by her soul. Mary heard about it, and Amber was sure that, that this had happened to her cousin Elizabeth. So now I pick up with the passage this morning where Elizabeth, uh, Mary runs to Elizabeth's house, and she's pregnant with Jesus. And Elizabeth is pregnant with John. And as soon as Mary knocks on the door, the Bible says, and she recognized it was Mary. John got upset, baby. <laughs> he started jumping for joy inside of her womb. Now, he said he didn't know. As she began to talk with Elizabeth, and tell Elizabeth about what had happened to her. Last week we talked about old John and his muse. Couldn't hold his muse. I wish I had to say that one for today. Amen. <laughs> because John in the inside of Elizabeth is listening to this conversation that is going on. And the spirit begins to move from Mary and move to Elizabeth. The spirit begins to move from Jesus, Father God, the Son, and move into John the baptizer to be. And while Jesus was still in the water in his mother's womb, and John was still in the water in his mother's womb, all of a sudden he began to jump and leap for joy inside of his mother. And here it is some 30 years later, John said, yeah, you know him. You met him when you were in your mother's womb in the water. And now you meet him again. In the and now both of you are in the water again together. To be baptized. Well, Brad, what does that have to do with him? grain of corn falling to the earth. What does that have to do with the temple being destroyed? And in three days, it rises again. What does that have to do with Jonah in the belly of a whale and going down, but then coming back up? But real, what does that have to do with the children of Israel? going to the Red Sea, going in on one side and coming back out on the other side. If you are a Christian, you said, I confess the Lord Jesus with my mouth and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. Jesus said, if you believe, that you ought to know then when that grain of seed falls to the ground, it'll rise up again. Even though the temple is destroyed, one day it'll rise up again. 
Even his stubbornness, Jonah went down, went in the belly of the well. And when he repented of his ways, the Bible said that the well spit him back out and he came back up, took him down and bring him back up again. Even when your enemies are closing in behind you at your Red Sea experience, God said, I want you to go down and symbolize you're going in the water. But guess what? I'm not going to leave you there. I'm going to bring you back up again. And so when you are baptized, Jesus says, John, you need to baptize me. And John said, Lord, I don't need to baptize you. Jesus said, oh, yeah, I want people to understand that when they baptize, they are laid in the water. And in the laying of the water, it represents my dying in my burial in the water. But guess what? I'm not going to stay there. I'm coming back up again. The washing away of my sin is symbolized in the baptism. But guess what? God says you're going to rise again. So early Sunday morning after they had crucified him, early Sunday morning after they had nailed him to the cross, early Sunday morning after he had been laid in a grave for three days, he got up. He got up. He got up. He got up with all the power in heaven. And he says, when you are willing to be baptized, <laughs> you're playing my themes. <laughs> when you're willing to be baptized, you're putting on my uniform. When you're willing to be baptized, you're going to be like I was with Lazarus. When his sister Mary and Martha called for Jesus and said, hey, their friend Lazarus is sick, amen. And Jesus stayed where he was for four days. Didn't go and see about his friend Lazarus. But then on the fourth day, he got up and started going to see about Lazarus because he got worried that he had died. And his friend said, Lord, he's dead. Now, there's nothing. His friend said, no, nah. Jesus said, he's but asleep. Amen. I want you to understand. I want you to realize when God talks about somebody and when we refer to them being dead, God said, no, they're just asleep. So guess what? It's just like the baptism. They're going to lay down, just like I said with Jesus. You may lay down. But one great morning, you're going to rise up again. Show me where you gave up and show me where you laid his body at. The Bible says he called Lazarus even from the grave and brought him back to life. As Christians, our faith doesn't lie in the fact that we know God. The devil knows. Christians, our faith didn't lie in the fact that he was, Jesus was a great prophet. A Muslim recognized him as a great prophet. Our, as a Christian, our faith does not lie in the fact that he was a Hebrew, that he was of the Jewish portrayed. The Jews recognized him, they just didn't accept him. It's more to just knowing. The Bible says you know him by calling on his name. Jesus, Emmanuel, but most important, believe it in your heart that God raised him from the dead. That's where Christianity separates itself from anybody else. Your baptism is showing his death, his burial, but then most of all, rising back up in his resurrection. The reason for the season that we celebrate right now is that God loved us so much that he gave us his only begotten son, and his name is Jesus. Now, you may go around and say, well, I don't know him. But I venture to say, he knows you, and he wants to have a relationship with you this morning. Come now. We extend an invitation to you. The doors of the church is open. Come now. Praise him. 
Doors of the church are open. If there's one, let them come at this time. Whether by letter candidate for baptism or Christian experience, we extend this invitation to you. Come now. Perhaps you're searching for a church home, rededication of your life, or simply needing prayer. We extend this invitation. To those of you who are listening in, we will commune after the dedication service. If there's anyone here who does not have a communion tablet, please take some. Raise your hand again if you need a communion tablet. There's one, let them come at this time. God bless you. At this time, we're going to take a moment. For another part of our service. Just stand in the center if you don't mind. If there are grandparents or godparents or anyone else who would like to stand with them, you're welcome to do so. If you want to stay where you are, that is fine as well. It is up to you. Any other relative? Come over side of River Moore. We have coming before us with Kevin Brookson and his wife and two of their four children. Thank God for answering prayers. Amen. <laughs> we'll explain that to the rest of y'all later. Amen. Um, Make sure I pronounce the names right. Um, to me, to Mia, that's what I thought. Amen. Simone Wilkinson, Kyrie Terrell Wilkinson. Amen. Mom and dad are wanting to come and dedicate their children to the Lord. They are surrounded by grandparents and loving an uncle and great uncle as well, Reverend Moore. And so I'll share with you these words and then I will come down at the end and touch them. The word of the Lord says this in Deuteronomy 6, 6 and 7. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your heart and press them on your children. Talk about them when you sit down at home and when you walk around along the road and when you lay down and when you get up. Remind your children that they're God's children and God has entrusted them in your hands. In the book, it tells of a woman who prayed to the Lord, who was barren, and the Lord blessed her with a child. 
And she says, Lord, the women are mocking me. The women are talking about me. If you just bless me with a child, I'll give this child back to you. And she was blessed with a child, a male child. And when the child became of age, she took the child back to the temple herself and dedicated him to the service of the Lord. Oftentimes, we think the dedication of a child is actually a dedication of the child. But let me share with you, this dedication is of the parents, of the grandparents, of all of you that are standing here. God has done his part. He's blessed you to have the children, and they are here with you. They are already God's children. Now God holds each and every one of you and each and every one of us responsible for the care of his precious cargo. And so we do this service until they can become of age that they can speak for themselves concerning their relationship with God. So to the parents, I ask of you these questions as you bring your children before us this day. It's the first time I've done two in the same family in the same day, but it worked out great. First time, amen, brother. Lynn Wilkinson Sr. was able to time this, and he can get all this done in one day. Amen. He's an efficient person now, amen. So I ask you to answer these questions for your children by simply saying, we do, if you agree. Do you here this day recognize your children as a gift from God and give heartfelt thanks to God for these blessings? Do you here this day dedicate your child to the Lord who gave them to you, if so say we do. Do you here this day pledge as parents that you will bring up your child in the nurturing and admonition of God, say we do. Do you here this day promise to give your child every possible benefit of home, of school, and of church, if so, amen. Do you here this day pledge to pray for God to prosper and to bless your child as they grow and develop. Say we do. Do you hear this day pledge to do all you can to direct your child toward a personal relationship with Jesus Christ as their savior? If you do, we do. Church and congregation, just as the parents have acknowledged their responsibility, God says, whatever you do to the least of these, my children, amen. He praised it when a child came up to him and began to talk to him and the adults and the disciples tried to push the child, but he said, suffer it not to be so, except every one of you become humble as these children are. You can't have any parts of him. Simply trusting him, provide your daily bread. Church family, do you also accept this responsibility in helping to raise and care for these children and bringing them up right in the sight of the Lord? If so, say we do. God bless you. Father God in heaven, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify your name. We pray your blessings upon these parents. We pray your blessings upon this congregation. We pray your blessings upon especially these children who have come now in your name, in the name of of Jesus, we do ask and pray. Amen. Thank
So I say amen. Amen again. Brother Kingston and Glenn, if you would come forward and stand out front. Can you get it open? Take the tablet out. Broke it. It's okay. Y'all you know would kind of help them. Glenn, give him another one. Broke it. Can somebody help Glenn? <laughs> He got it now. Amen. There we go. God bless you. There's two things that the Bible commands and requests that you do. One, if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. One is that you're willing to be baptized. You've done that. The other one says, do this as often as you can. You see in the front of that table, the red writing in the front of the table. Back up just a little bit. Okay. Do often as you can in remembrance of me. So what are you remembering? Jesus wants you to know that he came and he offered up his body as a sacrifice for our sins. And he says this bread will represent the body, amen, of Jesus Christ. Take bread and do eat. And then he says, take the wine in which you have to drink. And this wine represents his blood that covers us. He says, whenever you eat the bread, you represent his body. Whenever you drink the wine, you represent his blood. Do take now and you do drink. And as often as you do this, then you're showing everybody around here that Jesus died on the cross and he rose. But the Bible says he's coming back again. So if anything ever happens to me, anything ever happens to you, we know Jesus still loves us and cares for us. And God bless you. We're going to ask our ministers and officers to come around, and we're going to do what we call right-hand fellowship uh, with them at this time, and then we will close out with our service.
as we're preparing to close out. We have a dedication certificate on behalf of Pleasant Green Missionary Church. Child dedication. This certified that Tamia Wilkerson has been dedicated, has been dedicated to the Lord on the 11th day of December in the year of 2022 at Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church, signed by his father, mother, and the pastor. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, whosoever believed in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. Amen. Glenn, Wilkerson III, Kingston, Bill Flowers, this certifies that you were baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost uh, on the 11th day of December, in the year of our Lord, 2022, at Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church, Matthew 28, 19, 20, go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, Pastor Darrell McQuarter and her to sing Mayberry Church. Lord, God bless you. God keep you. And give the Lord a hand praise for you. Amen. God bless your heart. Satisfied. Amen. I want to... Give a special acknowledge to my little big brother, James in the corner over here, amen, who's been caregiving with my mom. He has a little relief in the last week or so with Dwight being here, amen. So we are, <laughs> we are thankful for them as well. Uh, to Lemmy and Henry, God bless you. Uh, Henry, Lemmy's getting over a little knee surgery there, so, so she's looking more like her mama every day, amen. She bit, that's what my daddy said, well, he looked like your dad, my daddy. Well, my daddy said, well, who are you supposed to look like? Amen. So I'm going to stay with that one. God bless you. God keep you. Let us prepare to close out. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being with us. Our prayers are with you, Sister Whitman. Again, glad to see you and your entire family. Amen. <laughs> Come on, John, in with us. Sing. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Come on, say it again. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Can you say it again with us? Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say church say amen. amen. I heard somebody say, God has spoken. Let, Let the, the church, church say amen. amen. I heard somebody say, God has spoken. Let, Let the, the church, church say, say To the Hampton family, Dion's mom, we're glad to see you here with us this morning as well. To Sister Turner, we're keeping you lifting up in our prayers as well. To our candidates and those dedicated in the family, we pray traveling grace for you that are traveling back. God's protection over each and every one of us. 
now unto him who is well able to do exceedingly and abundantly above whatsoever we ask or whatsoever we think. To God be the glory forever and forevermore. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. God bless all of you. Amen.